Nothing magical about it. Forget, I'll have to zoom out. So. Oh, she says, yes, I'll be there in May. So can yeah, you get yeah, still yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Such dress car asks where I'm from. I'm from about an hour outside of Chicago, actually. So way up northwest Indiana. But, no, okay, the question was about the bullnose chisels. Isn't it? Yeah. These are the chisels. We're kind of big ones. You can see it. They're flat on the, the back side. They have a bevel, and the bevel is is slightly rounded in two directions. I know some cutting knives have a flat bevel, like a, like a standard carpenter's mm -hmm. chisel. This bevel is. Oh, it's going right to focus. Wow, mm -hmm. whatever. It's beveled this way very slightly, and the tip is rounded very slightly. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a double double bevel. Maybe you can see it by the way the light goes. And when we're when we're pulling out wood. This allows us to rock it a little left, rock it a little to the right. We scoop a little bit this way. So it's not a flat, the bevel is not flat in right. two dimensions. Right. So, so, so when, you're, when you're doing the main carving knife, the bevel is flat. Your main challenge is to hold it flat on the stone as you're moving. If you rock and rock and rock and rock, you get a curved bevel and it's difficult to use the knife. Yeah, and it this, the type of knife it so, so this one is the other way around. If we, we don't want to move flat, we want to rock, rock, rock. So to me, that makes it easier, actually, because rocking is, is sort of More the way, yeah, motion. because of the way our, our bones and ligaments are tied together, you know, we're, we're, we're not like a, a robot that has a straight movement. We don't have any straight movement in our bodies. So there's no, it's no big deal. What I'm going to do is, again, I'm just simply going to, as I move side by side by side by side, I'm working from my elbow. So I'm actually moving in a, I'm sweeping in a curve here. I'm not going in a straight line, straight line. I'm rocking my body right now. Right. If I do it from my elbow, then my hand goes in a natural curve. Mm. And then what I simply do is I simply rotate, tip, 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 tip this way as I'm doing it. And the combination of those two things, <laughs> slightly means and you can now check against the light you can't see but I'm looking now against my light looking for shiny places and scratched places shiny places and scratched places yeah. the shiny places are parts that I haven't done yet because mm. it's shiny from having been used 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 and the scratched places are parts that are actually scratched and sharpened yeah. let's get a bit closer <laughs> Sharpening sounds nice. <laughs> There's no more ASMR people, are we? So, yeah. so, and then check it. I'm looking against the light to see what's shiny and what's not shiny. And if I've done it well, right at the bottom here, under my finger, this little burr is developing. This tiny burr on the flat side, because as I've been sharpening here on the tip, it bends the metal up. I'm not using much pressure here at all. Absolutely not much pressure. This isn't a broken knife like we do. So this is the me the medium stone. I'd never use the rough stone for these because they don't break. You know? Okay, there we are. It looks like the shape I want, and it's now got a little burr at the back. And I hear there's an interesting trick about this one. To get the burr off the back, this thing has to stay absolutely flat on this thing. Now this one I'm using here, and this is a two millimeter wide one, so no problem. If I put my finger on the back and just do it this way, that thing is going to stay flat with no problem. And the wider ones, a six millimeter, absolutely it stays flat, completely okay with no swag. But the thinner you get, you start to get down to one millimeter or so, and it wants to rock. There's no way it stays flat on the back of it. So what you do is you grab a wood chip. Uh, do I have one? Let me let me look under my bench here just a second. You've been carving on one. Well, I do. A bit small. Find one that might be suitable. I'm so. There you go. Here, this looks like it might. Here. Slightly. So you grab a wood chip from under your bench, which is a curved chip, and use that 
on the back of the blade like this. And that acts as like it's outriggers on a canoe, right? You see when it's outriggers and that helps the thing now stay flat instead of rocking side to side to side to side to side. This is Ito-san, that day, Ito one, of those, one of those two TV days, you know. Mm -hmm. He shows me this, I'm like, he didn't explain it first, he just does it. And he looks up to see like, are you getting are you this? Learning? Are you getting this? Like why? And I said, ah, magara na yoni desu ne. So desu ne. Toka. So he didn't explain it. It's the old way. Yeah. The, the older guys just do the thing. They don't teach you anything. Yeah. Like he knew the situation. I was, so he knew the, it was a demonstration. He knew, but in, in, in the region, there's no demonstrations. Just the guys are working. Hmm. Yeah. The older craftsman would never have actually specifically showed, but in his own work, you're doing this. And you've got yeah. to watch and pick this up and watch this and pick this up. Hmm. Now, with Ito-san that day, obviously, there was TV there. He knew the setup. It was, yeah. it was an actual, quote, demonstration, unquote. Yeah. So he didn't, but he even, even during the demonstration, he didn't say, okay, now what I'm going to do is this, and the purpose of this is to keep a flat, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. He didn't do that. He just did it. But he looks over to me, you know. Yeah. Like, are you getting this? So, are you getting this? So, so, and there it goes. And now, because of the outriggers, it stays flat. And when you've looked at this, you've taken off your burr, and the back of that thing is now flat. Hmm. And you only need that for the ones that are like one millimeter or so. But the wider ones don't need that because you're not in any any question of rocking back right. and forth, rocking back and forth. Huh. So that's it. Yeah. That's it. I've done it on one thousand stone. So I've got to now take. I've only done one of these chisels, but I've got, it's now scratched because I've done it on the one thousand stone. So we've got to go back now to the to the finer stone and polish it. Someone Here. says, uh, Ito Pro Tips copyright. All right. <laughs> 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 this is to smooth out those. Yeah, this, is, this is the Shiagito, the fine stone. Very light touch just to get rid of those scratches. And again, this one doesn't need the outriggers because I can keep it flat with my finger. And it doesn't need much at all. Just a touch to get rid of that burr. Well, the whole sharpening thing, for some, for, for a blade like this, which was not broken, it's literally second, like the whole thing, 30 seconds or so, it's done. So, you know. So what I would normally do is, is uh, maybe be, before I start work on some given session, you sit down and think, oh, yeah, yesterday the, the blade was giving me a bit of trouble. So you sit down and you do all your knives. Yeah. You know, what have I got? I've got, what, three or four of them. And you do them all in a bunch. So you don't change stones. You pull out the medium stone, do them all on the medium stone, put it away, clean it away, bring up the, the fine stone, and do them all on the fine stone. You know? right. So I don't hope that helps. I don't know. Yeah, it's a really... Cat one says, this is amazing, just what I need to know. So. It's just so simple. I don't, I don't know what else I can say. I'm sorry, you know, so...